here's a construction for which the Romans used the arch a great deal. You'll notice a lot of similarity between this. This is the Colosseum in Rome. It really resembles an aqueduct just wrapped around into an oval structure. So here every arch is directing the force against the next arch and wrapped in a circle it just hangs together as a whole. Now the shape of this is really not the way the Romans constructed it. This is the original height of the wall. Over the 2,000 years since this was constructed, Rome has gone up and down in population and in the Middle Ages its population was less than a tenth of what it was in Roman times and the skills had been lost in terms of quarrying stone but in order to use stone to build things many times older buildings like this were robbed of their stone and various structures constructed in Rome, churches primarily, of this stone. So that's why we see this in rather a decrepit condition today. Here's the way it looks in a larger picture and here's another view of it. In just a second I'm going to show you a view that is a drawing of what it probably looked like in Roman days. So here's what it looked like in Roman times and let's go back and forth. You'll notice all well, this hollow space here was actually filled up with statues of gladiators because gladiatorial contests took place in here. And this big statue outside, we suspect a gold-plated statue, a very large one. Also we see here something that no longer exists. What's the purpose of these little outcroppings of stone? Well, it turns out they were used to support poles and a massive canvas roof existed above this to shade the people attending an event. So it's interesting to think about how this might have looked and how people might have felt about it in ancient times when a structure this large was definitely a rarity and unlike the Egyptian pyramids which were tombs this was a very actively used structure with many thousands of people going in and out probably every day. So here's a view of that same area with the Colosseum here a view as it exists today with, we'll talk about this as a Roman commemorative arch, but various other structures in rubble here in Rome. This is what it probably looked like in Roman times. So once again here you see just a lot of rubble in this area. Here you see would have had a structure there constructed much like a Greek temple. And here's another view of that statue and then here's the Colosseum and somebody walking through here might have had this grand view. Now inside the Colosseum, it's pretty decrepit today. It's a little hard to make sense of what we're looking at here. These were seating areas. Here's the roof where the canvas would have been scratched. And this is actually the floor level. What you see here is all the passageways supporting the floor and areas where the competitors in gladiatorial contests or animals that were being brought in to fight gladiators or even Christians that were eventually martyred in the Colosseum might have been brought in this way and emerged through trap doors. This is the way the Colosseum probably looked to somebody standing on that floor and looking up at the spectators. And then here is this massive canvas up on poles and it's very interesting how they arranged this the ventilation possible here and then the shading of that canvas. Here's a cutaway view of what it might have looked like in the Colosseum. We have here animals being stored down here and gladiators fighting them. The animals arrive, arriving on the scene from these kinds of trap doors. All sorts of games were played here. In fact, there's even some evidence that at times this area was flooded. Ships floated on it, or at least boats floated on it, for various kinds of enactments of battles. So this sort of entertainment was quite prominent in ancient Rome, centered in the Colosseum in Rome itself. Here's another use of the arch, and a lot of things to construct this borrowed from the Greeks. Now, first of all, notice that it is an arch here, and symmetrically arranged to smaller arches. These are just passageways, and there really is no purpose for this arch, aside from providing a surface here, here, and on these interior walls for inscriptions and statues and various other commemorative pieces of artwork. The Romans loved this type of a commemorative arch and Europe has many many hundreds of them in various places. They were erected as public monuments to commemorate battles or victories. They exhibit this sort of a borrowing of the Greek temple with this 
kind of the hint here of a triangular roof. And you'll notice here columns, which are entirely cosmetic. You should be able to recognize here that these particular columns are Corinthian columns because of this very fancy capital. Now this is the area of Rome, the downtown area, excavated in the 1920s and uh, excavation is still continuing. This is the rubble of the structures that existed in the center of Rome close to the Colosseum at the time of the Caesars in the first century. This is a more modern structure, a church more recently built, but these arches are part of a church built by the Emperor Constantine in the 300s. And we're going to take a look at that, a little closer look, but notice the arch once again, spanning quite a large distance in use in this type of a building, a church building. Here's another view of those same arches. Previously we were up here, kind of looking down at this, and now we're on the ground, of course, looking this way. Let's take a look at how this structure might have looked in ancient times. And let's go back and forth. You'll notice I've positioned that next picture so that this arch right here is in the same location. And you see here, but all the rest of the structure is still in place. So this is a hypothetical reconstruction based on literature and various other types of artifacts from the earlier days. Marble floors, interesting coloration, arches used quite a bit, and Corinthian columns, in this case probably actually providing some type of a structural support. Also what looks like pointed arches here are not really. This is the intersection of two circular arches and it happens from our view that this point of intersection here looks like a pointed arch but it's not really. Here's another building, the Pantheon in Rome. This still stands and it's open for public inspection. You can walk in there. Interesting structure. You'll notice Corinthian columns and looking like a Greek temple. What is this area here? Well, from a prior slide you should remember this whole area here is called the pediment, but this area is for something called the tympanum, which is the decoration that used to be here. And in a second I'll show you what that decoration probably looked like. This is a building that was robbed of some of its decorative elements when the current St. Peter's Basilica was constructed in Rome. By that time, bronze and bronze creation was kind of uh, not a lost art, but it wasn't very easy to do. As an expedient, when the canopy above the altar in St. Peter's was constructed, the bronze that was here was removed and melted down to construct those columns. So it's a shame that what was here was lost. You see just the flat surface of the pediment remaining. Here's what it might have looked like, all this type of decoration, this tympanum, and a little bit more ornate decoration on other parts of the structure also. But let's take a look inside. The Pantheon was constructed, it was a marvel of architecture, and for over, well over a thousand years after its construction, the technique for constructing it was lost. Interestingly enough, it's a dome with a big hole called the oculus. And that hole lets, of course, sunlight come in. You see the sunlight streaming here in the shape of a big circle. What happens when it rains? Well, the rain comes in and it gets wet. It's a big stone floor and they just wipe it up. Originally, this was constructed called the Pantheon as a place to house statues of all the Roman deities. It was later used as a tomb for some of the Italian kings many, many hundreds of years later. But the interesting thing about it is the way that this is constructed. We theorize they did this construction without false work, holding this up. And that's the technique of forming this dome in such a way that the layers are built up, self-supporting, all the way up to the top with increasingly lighter weight concrete here. Pumice being used here mixed in with the concrete to make the concrete lighter because it didn't have to deal with as many forces as the supporting concrete here. So very interesting how the Romans did this. It wasn't until the 1400s that Brunelleschi figured out how to do this and created a dome of similar construction in Florence which is still standing. This is what the Pantheon looks like on top. Nothing supporting it inside. These columns are all around the periphery and they do provide structural support. Magnificent engineering work here to be able to construct this in ancient times. 
And you can see it's quite a successful structure because it still exists and it still stands in the original location.